Hey guys, today I'm gonna to share with you your new favorite fall treat, <laughs> an apple fritter. These are so delicious and easy to put together on a weekend when you're looking for a little baking project. They also take advantage of all those beautiful apples that are in season right now. Let me show you how to make them. So the first thing we're gonna do is prepare our apples. So I'm working with Gala apples. I like this variety of apple because they're really light and so they will cook up much quicker in a fry setting. And then you can transfer them to a bowl and then you're gonna sprinkle them with a tablespoon of sugar and three quarters tablespoon of cinnamon. And give those a toss just until everything is combined. And then in a large nonstick skillet, you wanna melt two tablespoons of butter. And once that butter is melted and foamy, you can then add the apples. And at this stage, you wanna cook the apples down just until they're really caramelized and tender. And it will also help all that butter soak into the apples and give them great flavor as well. And then while your apples are cooling, we're going to prepare the batter. So the first thing you wanna do is measure out a cup of milk. It can be 2% whole milk, whatever you have is fine. And then you wanna split a vanilla bean pod down the center and scrape out the seeds. And I like to put the seeds and the pod in together because there's great flavor in that pod. And then you just wanna microwave this for about a minute, a minute and a half, just until that milk is nice and warm. And just let it steep there on your countertop while you're mixing the rest of the ingredients. And this will create a really beautiful vanilla infused milk. Now, if you didn't have vanilla bean or if they're too expensive where you live, I know they can be outrageous. <laughs> you can also skip this step and just use maybe two teaspoons of vanilla extract instead. Then in a large bowl, you're gonna add a cup and three quarters of all-purpose flour, one and three quarters teaspoon of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a third of a cup of sugar. And then you can whisk that all together until combined. Then you're going to fish out your vanilla bean pod and then add your vanilla milk and one egg. And that's all there is to it. And then you can just stir that all up until you have a nice batter. And then we're gonna add back in our apples. So, before we set out on the frying part, frying can go really, really well or go really, really wrong. <laughs> and usually it comes down to a candy thermometer. So it's really important anytime you're frying anything to have a consistent temperature because if it's too hot, your fritters will be burnt and then doughy inside. And if it's not hot enough, you'll end up with a really greasy fritter. So you really want a good candy thermometer that will tell you when your oil is at 375 degrees, which I think is a really good temperature for frying. And then you just keep your thermometer in there as you're frying to make sure that that oil is consistent. And you just wanna find the spot. You can go up or down, just calibrating the heat until you have nice consistency. Then the other thing you wanna do is get everything kind of set up. So get your bowl of batter on one side and then set up your little draining station. And I like to take a sheet pan, line it with some paper towels, and put a cooling rack in the center. That way when my fritters are done, I have a place to put them. And then two other things that will help with your frying success is a cookie dough scooper that is one inch. Now at first this might look like a very small quantity, but once you put the dough in the oil, they do puff up and they become really nice bite-sized pieces. And I find the one inch works really well. And another thing that's helpful to have is a spider strainer, which will help you fish out your fritters once they're done. So once you have all of that set up, you are ready to go. So you wanna start by frying three fritters at a time. So you can go ahead and scoop it out and drop the batter in the hot oil, and you'll see they'll start to puff up and kind of float around. You'll know that they're done when they're really nice and golden brown and they've been in there for at least two to three minutes, and place them on your cooling rack. And then you can sprinkle them with a little bit of powdered sugar, now, if you wanted to make these for a party, you could certainly make this batter ahead of time and place in your fridge, and then maybe bring it to room temperature for about 20 minutes or so before you begin frying. I have done it where I've fried them and then kept them at room temperature and then heated them up before guests arrived, but I don't think they're as good. <laughs> I think there's something about a freshly fried fritter that just can't be beat. So I would go the former route, put it in your fridge and then fry them just quickly before people come. They are the perfect thing to just pop in your mouth when you're wanting just a little taste of fall. And if you would like my newest videos to appear in your inbox every week, you can sign up for my newsletter. The link is in the description, and then you'll be the first one to know when a new video posts. All right, you guys, I'll see you back here next time. Until then, bye.